And if you look around the world, which are the most important source countries of migrants living in Western countries? These are not the poorest countries in the world. There's a lot of historical and contemporary evidence to argue that development in poor countries will actually lead to more migration because migration gives people the opportunities like you know if you become slightly wealthier you'll have more opportunities to move but also issues like education will change people's ideas about what the good life is about you know once you go to school you sort of change your ideas about what your future is going to be like. And often people start to aspire to live in cities or to have certain jobs you can't find in places where they stay. And of course, on another level, development means better infrastructure, the job markets get more complex, which means often people have to shift location in order to find a job or join family members. So initially, what we call development is speeding up movement. First of all, to cities, from rural areas to cities, the whole urbanization process, and later on, out movement. And if you look around the world, which are the most important source countries of migrants living in Western countries? These are not the poorest countries in the world, and that is not a coincidence at all. So countries like Mexico, Morocco, Tunisia, Turkey, the Philippines, these are countries with very high percentages of their populations living abroad. These are all middle to even higher income countries. And this is not a coincidence, because in those countries you have large young populations who have high aspirations, but also the means to migrate. But actually the countries that are poorest, for instance in Sub-Saharan Africa, is the region with the lowest migration in the world. Because fewer people have the resources and the opportunities to move around, even within the continent. And certainly when you look at migration out of the continent, it's actually very low. And the African countries with relatively high migration to North America, to Europe, are the relatively stable and relatively prosperous countries. Like, for instance, South Africa or Senegal or Ghana. These are the countries that have much higher percentage of the populations living in the West. But of course, once a country and a society becomes more attractive, stable and wealthy, it will start to attract more migrants. And we have many examples of countries that used to be known as classical immigration countries. I think Italy is a great example, which Italy is one of the main sources of immigrants from many countries around the world. South America, North America, many Italian immigrants live there, also in other European countries. Italy has transformed into a destination for migrants. So Turkey has already gone through that transition and Mexico and Morocco in the future may well, but that depends of course on future stability and growth, become real destination countries. The same for China as becoming a destination for migrants in the world. Where those migrants come from, those may be right, the countries that are currently quite poor and will become a much bigger potential for migration, migration in the world. So the future migration populations are much more likely to look, come from countries that are currently very poor. So future migration in the world may become more and more African, for instance, which paradoxically is the consequence of uh, development rather than the consequence of poverty. Because